All right, we're live on Facebook. We're having an open mic. Uh, Richie Sauter sending him a healing, peace, love, and comfort. He was scheduled to go on right now, but he's uh, he's uh, feeling the energies right now. Maybe that's one of the things we can talk about. Um, anyway, anybody wants to come in, you'll need to come in on uh, on Facebook. Hang on, I'll be right back. I got to grab my uh, phone. Sorry about that. Anyway, we're going to have an open mic. Anybody, any new faces that want to come on? Uh, just come on and uh, use the Zoom link that's in the uh, the text of this, uh, this live or the announcement I just put up. Come into the Zoom room, send me a message on the chat, and let me know you want to come in. Let's see here. we got a few people on. Hey, Shanine. Let me just share this out real quick and give some people some time to come in. Let's do that. Got 29 people in the house, certainly some uh, new faces we could get on here. You know, I think that'd be cool. Rebecca Williams, hadn't seen you in a while. Maybe you want to come on. Anybody want to come on? Just come to the Zoom room and uh, send me a message on the, on the Zoom chat and I'll pull you up. And we'll just have a uh, discussion on real-time intel, see what's happening for everybody. It's been a lot going on, and a lot of people are feeling it. Richie Sauter's feeling it right now, as he's uh, a little bit under the weather. Hello, Grace Solaris. How you doing? It's good to see everybody. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Shanine and everybody else, thank you for your continued love and support. We got... <clears throat> Deidre and Rhea Magdalena in the uh, Zoom room. Either one of you guys want to come on, send me a message on the Zoom room chat. I don't want to be presumptuous. What's the crack? Melissa Dehan, good to see you. Yeah. So any, anybody that wants to come on, uh, just uh, hit that link that's in the, uh, the text of this live and uh, come into the Zoom room. And then when you come into the Zoom room, uh, let me know that you want to come on. Let's see, we got one coming on now. Let's see who this is. Hang on, let me get this out of the way. Uh, oh, volume up, please. The volume's low. Anybody else having a problem with the volume? Uh, Fidget Gal says she's in. Come on over to the Zoom room and let's get you up here. Anybody else having problems with the volume? Shouldn't be having any problems with the volume shouldn't be let's see hang on all right maybe that'll help a little bit it may be on your end that the volume's low yes low over here too mm, that's not good mm, let's try something else all right how's that wait let's put all right, how's that? You are a wee bit quiet. Okay, how about that? Is that better? Can y'all hear it all right? It's loud for me. Facebook volume is great. Must have been in the Zoom room where the volume was down. But anyway, I switched microphones. We've got six people in the, the Zoom room. Who wants to come on? Uh, let's see, volume okay here. Facebook volume's okay. <clears throat> Annie Westenbrink, you're, you're more than welcome to come on. Zoom is quiet. I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Mm. Test speaker and microphone. Looks like it's okay. All right. So uh, that's worse. All right. What the hell is going on here? 
What the hell is going on? Hmm. Well, let's try one more time. Valerie Adams, see you doing a lot of videos out there. I love the work that you do. You want to come on? Okay, volume is fine for me now. Does anybody have a problem with this volume? Is anybody having a problem with it? Or is it still low? <laughs> Sorry about these tech difficulties, but anytime we have tech problems, we always have a great show. Okay, the mic is better. All right, volume okay. Mm, let's see, anybody else? I can hear fine. Volume still low on Zoom. Hmm. Deidre, you're the only one. Uh, she says it's a low for her too. Well, I don't know what to say about that. Uh, I guess, uh, let's see. Test, test, test. I have volume all the way up on my phone. Uh, huh. I'm tagging people's recommendation. Okay, it's right. Get into the Zoom. Mine's okay on Zoom. Still low. What is this? It must be these energies that we're finding ourselves in. All right. <clears throat> Let me try one other thing. Hang on. Let's try one other thing. And then we'll get started. Hopefully, yes, uh, some of you in the Zoom room want to come on. Uh, let's see. Can hear you. Hang on. Let's try it again. Uh -oh. Test, test, test. How's that, everybody? Is that better? All right. Yeah, better. All right. Okay. Let's see here. All right. We're getting a lot of people suggested to go. Yeah. Elfie, you should be coming in the Zoom room. We haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, anybody wants to come on, we're going to have a roundtable discussion. We're just going to run with it. Volume's good for everybody. Uh, whatever you did just made it louder. Okay, cool. I'm particularly looking for new faces, but if we can't get new faces, that's okay. Okay, I got nine people in the Zoom room, and I don't have anybody that's told me they want to come on. <laughs> so somebody tell me they want to come on. Happy to come on if you don't get any new faces. Okay, we can do that. Uh, let's see here. And uh, Jake, too. Let's see. I'll make sure I'm not missing any. All right. I don't, oh, oh, what is this? Okay. Let's see. All right, so Jake and Zahara, uh, that's better. And I think I saw another one here. Uh, let's see, was there anyone else that wants to come on too? Let's see. Uh, Zahara, uh, let's see. Rhea, what are you saying to me? I'm in bed in the darker I would have. Okay. So I'm going to give it a couple of more, a uh, couple of more minutes and uh, then we'll, uh, okay, let's see. Give Wesley the Zoom link, please, Todd. Okay, the, the Zoom link is in the, uh, the body of the Facebook text and the announcement that preceded it. So let me see if I can pull that up on my phone. Hang on a second. Let me see here. It's probably going to, here, let me just copy that whole thing. Copy and go back in here put it on the comments let's see what we'll do is we'll just run with it spontaneously now there's the zoom link i hope that'll work okay melissa dehan shanine uh get in there and tell them something what's the zoom link there it is okay so we got uh open round table discussion i would like to come on but i already was on okay and you can come on too uh, Valerie Adams is going to come on. Okay. So we're going to pull up uh, and we're going to just do a round table thing. I'm going to keep it moving. Nothing personal. We're going to keep it moving and allow people to speak and talk about things and uh, talk about what's going on. Okay. So Wesley Switzer is going to come on. I'm going to try to keep it to, you know, a, a manageable level. So for those of you who come in after we've already gotten started, let's, uh, Let's uh, just keep in mind, we want to get more and more people on here. And so uh, 
let's allow them to, uh, you know, let's uh, re revolve around like musical chairs a little bit. Okay, I'm having a hard time keeping up with all this. Let's see. I would like to come on. Okay, so we got Ann. Uh, let's see who else. Let's start with the new faces and, and stay in the Zoom room, uh, you guys. Um, if you want to come on, because I'll get everybody on. Let's see. Give me a minute. I'll come on. Valerie Adams. She's not been on. Um, uh, Deborah Sharp, if you want to be on, let me know. Uh, and Deidre's got a question. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, let's start pulling people up here. Hang on. Uh, Igidjuus Sidlaukas, you've been making a lot of comments. And uh, if you'd like to come on, we certainly are open. Everybody is welcome in the House of Sology. Let's see. Okay, let's start with a couple of people. Let's see. Okay, Ann, I'm going to bring you up for now. And let's see who else. Uh, who else said they wanted to come on? Just give me a second here. Uh, Jake, let's get you up here. Uh, who else wanted to come in? Damn nation. Valerie Adams. Jake's got a picture of a woman there. Hang on a second. I'll, I'll, I'll unmute you on a second. Let me just pull up who else I got. I think there was Zahara. I know Valerie Adams said she was going to come on. So Deborah Sharp, man, she's new. I don't want to get too many up here at one time, but Jake said he's going to be quick, and we'll just uh, keep it going. we got plenty of time. we got all day. So we're going to bring her up. Now, uh, I'll come on too with my bed hair. Okay, let's do this. Let's get Rhea up here. And uh, this is cool. All right, oh, wait, we got two Rhea's. Rhea, I got you up here twice. I'm not sure which one to bring you up on. Uh, one is Africa MCG, and the other one is, oh, you're on twice. All right, hang on now. I'm going to go ahead and try this one, Rhea. See what works there. All right. Oh, I put up Melissa. Sorry. <laughs> Melissa, I didn't know if you wanted to come on. I put you up on accident. I was trying to pull up Maria. So if you want to just, you know, you can stay on if you want to. Or, all right. That's plenty right there. That's plenty for now. Uh, dang, I pulled up Jeanette on accident. I still am trying to get Rhea up here. Okay. Hang on a second. Promote. Okay. So I'm going to. Okay. Let's see. I don't want to. Let's see if I can remove, I'm going to remove, okay, remove that, Melissa's going to be on, okay, all right, let me unmute, let me unmute everybody, let me just make sure, oh, Valerie can't get, okay, Wesley, we've got uh, six people up, so just hang tight, all right, hang tight, we're going to, if you've got some time, just sit tight, uh, yeah, you can be in this, no problem uh okay yeah okay so Rhea's here with her bed hair all right now let me just unmute everybody one two we're gonna go in a round table so i'll just kind of moderate it and uh let me just get everybody unmuted uh so, wait a minute melissa and there you go and yeah and so you guys can self-mute if you're if you're uh if you've got any like loud noises and stuff, I think Deborah uh, muted hers. Okay. So Jake, what's happening? We'll start with you. We'll go Jake and Zahara, Deborah, Melissa, Rhea, and Jeanette. Jeanette. Okay. All right. So let's start this way. Jake's got a, Jake, can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. So let's start with you. Let's start with you. I know you've been on the go. I saw you down here in Florida and, uh, you know, I want to just say this to you and to everybody, anybody who's out there, you know, putting the effort out. And I don't mean that none of us aren't putting the effort out. I just mean some of these people that are out there showing the way that are just like, you know, following their guidance and packing up their stuff and just living day to day, moment by moment. It's, it's impressive. And it's not an easy life. I can speak to that. <laughs> Morgan and I can speak to that. So, Jake, what's happening? What's going on? It was 222. 22 22 222 yesterday and that is a profound uh, 
a num numeric uh, sequence, and there's been a lot of people talking about it. What what was it like for you? Uh, it was a little little dense dealing with emotions, um, but it's part of that kind of the. I was just wanting to bring up. I'm doing a new moon ceremony later. If anybody wants to join, and it's 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 along the lines of, um, you know, kind of what you were touching on. So many of us are in different places, but just honoring that energetic connection we all share, even if it's online. And to take a moment, uh, uh, I'm going to be doing some blessings to Mother Gaia and the. The amount of energy I'm feeling right now, I'm very grounded and I'm able to speak. And it's not a synchronicity that you just came live and are having this because I was outside and the sun seems to keep being, being here. But uh, I was manifesting an opportunity that I wish, hey, I could just share with everyone that if they had time to stop in and in a way, a similar way like this, where it's uh, different people being able to, to share whatever they want and just add to it is the, the amount of like, I, I'm feeling blessed with, with all of the people that are in this room right now. All of you guys are putting so much amazing love out there. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it and just to be here, but that, that's kind of all I really wanted to get at. And I appreciate mm -hmm. being able to meet you in Florida and holy shit. Yeah. It's been, it's been quite the journey. Uh, just, allowing and trusting and, and shedding away and reprogramming and releasing things that uh, it keeps getting more defined and more defined and more defined. And it's like, an, it's never ending. And so to answer your question, yeah, yesterday was a little dense, just kind of overflowing with different things and not really quite sure what they were. And, you know, I always talk about meditating and going within and all that. And it was a, a big day of that. So uh, yeah. But I, I'm humbled to be here with all of you and all the love you all share in every single way every day. Thank you. Right on. And what time's your uh, what time's your ceremony at? Uh, seven Central. Seven Central, eight Eastern will be 1 a.m. in England. And uh, that'll be about uh, midday down under. So for those of you who can make it, let's get out there and uh, co-create and collaborate uh with jake we got 67 people we got about 80 people in the house so thanks for popping in jake i appreciate it and uh see you again uh on the soul highway somewhere That's right on right, so we got uh we got ann what's going on ann met how you doing long time no see yeah i'm doing good <laughs> you're doing good so uh, the last time you came on was on an open mic. And I think I said, look, we need to do a show together. I don't know if we ever did one. I don't have. The no, memory. we didn't do one yet. Yeah, it was an open mic and I just popped on on my computer and there you were yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how it works. Richie Sauter got sick today. He's still he's down with the ener en energies. I heard his uh, voice on the phone. He sounded horrible. But um, anyway, peace, healing, love and comfort to him. But the last time we talked, it was very interesting talking to you. Uh, you've got some pretty solid intel. You're quiet, like a lot of the divine feminine over the, the past, uh, you know, what, two, three, five thousand years. But uh, it's time you guys are stepping up. What are you feeling now? What's going on? Uh, did the 2 22, 2 22 bring anything to you? Yeah, I was trying to get out to see a friend. I just couldn't. Every time I went out to my car, I was back to square one. So... I ended up sitting in my garden and I actually started painting and I started singing and I had that feminine energy coming in. It was like, it was coming from above and I was singing and painting mm -hmm. and I just wanted to be barefoot. I wanted to be naked. I wanted all kind of thing. I didn't do the naked thing because my neighbor can see me. So, <laughs> but it was so strong. It was as if I got pulled into earth it was like, like this movement and then just grounding, grounding, grounding. And I have a lot of energy going on in the sacral and the root chakra. I don't know about you guys, but it's yeah. just as if I'm anchoring in like, whoa, solid. And yeah. I have so much joy. Whereas around Christmas, it was like being in hell. I felt everything got stripped <laughs> off inside me. I reached out to Vera because I was so bad. <laughs> but then yeah. after this, I just felt so much joy. And I just wanted to show you the painting. It's this little postcard. It's 
I don't know if you can see because it's yeah yeah hang on a second hang on a second I can I can uh, make it just on you for a second yeah bro pull it to the camera oh yeah 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 wow. but the, the light isn't that good because no I that's okay light. yeah 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 that's nice yeah that's powerful very powerful yeah yeah but so you had so you felt like uh you felt a, a, a lot of divine feminine energy and and you wanted to get naked and sing and paint yeah and, but, and you felt like anchoring it uh, and i can tell you too that about a week ago i felt that and i think a lot of uh people have written about the divine feminine energy coming in in a, in a, in a different way because i mean i remember uh in late 2015 there was a lot of people posting and talking about the divine feminine had landed and then there was a period of time you know i want to say a couple of years where it was, it was a big part of what was talked about in these communities. And then I think in around mid 2018, um, I think we started to see the, the rise of the masculine and that went on for quite some time. But recently it seems like this, this mother goddess, divine feminine energy has really come home to roost. And I mean, it's really the women are stepping into their power. It's not just unique to the female incarnations but it pretty much runs that way so that's something that uh we'll see what other people are saying but that's something i think that's been uh talked about quite a bit lately so let's go I, to uh go ahead go ahead yeah i also feel like nothing works as it used to it's like yeah. there's like a clean slate i feel so yeah. much joy and it's just like if everybody tells me about that healing modality or this one or or this aspect or that aspect i'm just uh, I don't care. Yeah. It's as if it's back to basics, but in a whole new way, it's, I can't even explain it. No, no, I get that too. I mean, it's like everything that got us to this point, even right up to yesterday, doesn't apply. It's no. like, that's part of the uh, detachment from the identifications that we've had of who we thought we were. Uh, I think that's been a big adjustment and we can talk about these things. Uh, maybe we should just stick to a single, single subject as we make the, the uh, circuits around the round table, but let's, yeah, let's start with that. I mean, one of the things that that's seems to put some, have put some pressure on the community because so many people in the community have a, a tip, uh, a unique skill or skill set and abilities uh, channels, you know, uh, connections to certain star families or whatever the case is that were very beneficial to all of us, to themselves. But it seems like you, like what you said is, is, is happening. We're, we're in a different place now. It's the quantum versus the linear. It's the new versus the old. It's the multidimensional versus the singular. And some of these things we're having to detach from, I'm watching, uh, healers transform and also struggle. So I think that's a really good point. Now, Zahara, you've been uh, active as a healer, you know, as a channeler, you have incredible light language. Have you had to adjust in any way? Have you had to expand or transform or transmute in any way coming uh, from the space she's talking about into this new quantum energy? Yeah, you've, you've, um, you can hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, you both have uh, so eloquently summarized, um, definitely. I mean, for I think almost a year, and especially coming into this year, I was guided um, that everything I'm doing by the end of this year would be completely wiped. Mm. <laughs> and when I got that message, I could feel like my human ego going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I just let it go because I, I don't know what that's going to be and we're yeah. we're um how um amanda lawrence did that you probably some of you all of you watch she summarized everything so beautifully and how we're not rebirthing we're birthing hmm. um so for me i've kind of been trying to get to be functioning in the human linear way i've got a website i know people come to me on that and i keep deleting whole paragraphs <laughs> and i've had this huge urge just to delete the whole thing i'm like no 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 i, I i'm not going to delete but I, that's the the soul part of me yeah. which others are feeling to strip down and then just on a very um uh, 
physical level, I've just since October been having to face a lot of ego death with illness and operations and now there's more stuff going on and um so i mean yesterday i was just gripped gripped with fear yeah physical (laughs) representation in the body of what you're what uh, ann's talking about what you're talking about and the thing you talked about blowing something up or just deleting it i mean i think this is a big part of what's happening right now uh the identifications we've had not the identifications we had before we woke up because those we had gotten rid of it's the identifications we got in the process of the transition up to this point say up to 2020 uh you know these these connections we had these abilities and skills that we had that are were unique to us but now that are becoming more common among more people i guess and and, and in other words over identifying with the channels, so to speak, that we've had and the connections we've had with the multiverses or our higher aspects or however you want to put it, they're kind of taking a beating now and there's some ego death involved with that. So I think this is very interesting. It's an interesting spin on on what where we're at and where we're going. Let's go to uh, and th- and thank you both. I'm just keeping the um, the the uh, the thanks, the thank yous to a minimum so we can keep moving. Uh, there's a lot of people on here, but we can make it work. Deborah Sharp, we've never seen you before. I'm going to unmute you. Let me unmute you. You're not unmuted. There you go. Okay. So Deborah, Hi. first of all, hello. Uh, welcome to Hi. Sology. Um, uh, it's good to have you here. Um, I, I know I've seen your name before. I just hadn't. I've never seen your face or, or really talked to you. But so can it, can you relate to this? Are you uh, able to relate to this? I don't know anything about you in terms of like you know, you, are you a practitioner or anything but can you relate to what uh the ladies are talking about i i i, I can relate to what they're saying i'm in 2018 i i lost my husband to cancer and i took a downhill spiral and it was through uh positive videos on Facebook, such as yours and uh, and other people, that I began to lift lift myself out of that deep, deep pit. And and also, um, I've had abilities since the age of five, but my parents suppressed them. Hmm. And I didn't know why up until just a few weeks ago. Um, my daughter-in-law opened my eyes up and it was because they knew of my abilities but they didn't they knew everything that would come with those abilities and they didn't want to put that on a five-year-old and I kind of understand that now that I because I'm just starting I've just started a foundation class um three weeks ago to find out what all my abilities are because I've kept them, I've kept them hidden for so long. And I'm just, I'm, I'm forward by what's coming out. And I'm, 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 I'm very grateful. And I, I I love God and, and spirit has led me to some beautiful, beautiful people. Right on. And I just I want to thank you too, Todd, because your your lives they really really help a lot of people. And I I noticed just in the past I'd say a month where I've I've seen through the through uh, media and stuff. There's a lot of these religious churches that are starting to finally see that not everything they're teaching behind the pulpit is full truth yeah yeah that's uh that's true that's been happening and and of course you know it's hard to know what to believe you know whether it's propaganda or truth but uh, right no i think it's it's it makes sense because we're doing the inner work individually and you know 
creating a more illumination to bring out the shadows and that's part of it your story sounds very similar as you know to many many people that were shut down mm -hmm. at a young age one way or the other or as they got into uh, adulthood and then came back and woke back up or so to speak so that's a very that you're not alone and i think you know that and uh in, yeah. in terms of the of the personal traumas as well that we've all been through. but we also starting to understand that this is this is part of what's not real it's part of the illusion and i know that's loosely used in a cliche-ish type of way but the facts are the facts and uh let's uh let's move on to melissa dehan and see what's the crack <laughs> and uh you guys are welcome to stay here we're going to make a circle around here a few times anybody else wants to come on please let me know in the chat room in the zoom room and we'll work you in um melissa you know, we've had uh, quite a few shows together. You've been out there as a practitioner. Uh, I know through uh, personal knowledge, you've gone through a lot of transformation, uh, utilizing uh, some of Morgan, Morgan's mm. methods, uh, which I've also used. Uh, and it creates a lot of space. Uh, now, as a practitioner, based on what the lady said, you know, staying on that same subject, have you felt a difference uh, in these six, seven weeks of 2020 where uh, kind of out with the old, in with the new, and what, what uh, served you or what served us uh, is, is no longer valid? Yeah, 100%. One, one I think now anything that's not in resonance with who we are after doing the inner work, um, we're being sometimes brutally brought to a choice point and whether to engage with the new or engage with the old. And if we engage with the old, a lot of us are finding that um, it hasn't, it's not been gentle with us. It's not been gentle on us <laughs> because we're doing the inner work. We, we've all gotten to a point where we're done um, with, with trauma. We're, we're done with, with being prisoners of our past. And right now, more than ever, I'm finding that if we try to run back to what broke us, um, we're being turned upside down and inside out. And in that space, given the choice point whether to continue or pave another way for ourselves. And, you know, our eyes are being widely opened at the moment to, to what is working for us and what's not. And it's yeah. as simple as that, that for me personally. Um, I've, over the last month, been brought to a complete standstill everything just very still but at the same time when I look around at other people because I've been there November December was a bit chaotic mm. um, I'm seeing people now where I was and thankfully I'm in a space that I can kind of reach out and help people who are going through the, the stuff and you know they, they feel like it's so big it's so overwhelming um, and it is if we let it it is if we yeah. allow it so for me, bringing ourselves back to the present moment as often as possible is definitely mm -hmm. one of the key things that I found for myself. If you're operating from here as opposed to here, and there's a huge difference and you can feel it in your body. Um, try, and, try and be here now. Just be here now. Yeah, uh, I can relate to that. Uh, and I hear what you're saying. Uh, it's, uh, you know, everyone knows that we've been, well, I've been talking about launching a network well, we have, I guess, launched a network, but in a, in a bigger way from our own private server, you know, our own private stream controlling our own bandwidth. We've actually done uh, thousands of pages of code uh, because it's being built from scratch. Uh, our beloved brother, Aaron Pearson, has been working on it. And part of, uh, part of uh, what's happened is uh and i mean i'm saying this as an example of what you're talking about is uh his their house burned down about two and a half weeks ago and uh and and that kind of puts everything in perspective everybody was okay nothing happened in that regard but it put a standstill to that and the reason i'm bringing this up is because there's many many things that are happening to each of us some of them are kind of harsh uh some of them and and what happens is is that basically stops us in our tracks and kind of gives us a different perspective. So I sit here today as an example only to explain this to people is that, you know, the Sology network is, is, is there, it's there, it's in the ethers. It's, it's not to be like anything else, not as I, as I, 
can understand this, not to be judged by the old 3D definitions or, or appraisals. Uh, you know, we have all uh, connected and, and affected far more than we could ever imagine. And it's not based on the number of likes and it's not based on the number of views. It's, it's, it's something that in the non-physical that we're just starting to get in touch with. And I think we're going to get more and more in touch with it as time goes on. So I think that's a, a great, uh, a great point that you brought up. And the other thing I think that's a great point is about the heart that makes it kind of easy uh, and being present. And I think the universal energies that are present now are by, um, you know, by push, pull, uh, you know, dragged, uh, inflow are forcing us into a space of where we're going to be more and more present, which brings in all of our multidimensionality. It brings in all the other kingdoms, plant kingdoms. A lot of people have been talking about the elemental kingdom has been really, uh, more and more, um, part of what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis so these are the things that i that I, i'd love to talk about somebody asked a question on here uh i just want to be you know clear with everybody no we don't do readings uh Sology is not about readings and I don't, i'm not taking shots at anybody but uh we're actually here to talk about real-time intel and what the hell's going on here and support each other so that we're not deemed crazy in our own mind as we were <laughs> for years and years Let's move to uh, Rhea Magdalena. Everybody's welcome to stay here. I'm going to bring up um, uh, Carrie Lake in a minute. I've never met her, and uh, she'd like to come on and say hi and, and say a few words. But let's move to Rhea right now. Hey, Rhea, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Not too bad. Your, your bed hair looks fantastic, by the way. Thank you for... Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, but you should see mine. It looks like Jimi Hendrix in the morning. Morgan runs for me. Um, yeah. Fidget Gal, we are in the uh, Zoom room. You can use the link to come in here and, and uh, let me know in the chat if you want to come up. So, Rhea, can you relate to any of this? I know you spoke to Morgan. I, did, I don't know what about, but I mean, I know you spoke to her, uh, say, a month ago. So yeah. I know your head's in the game. Uh, anyone that Morgan's talking to, typically, <laughs> oh, <laughs> something's she, happening. Fantastic. But yeah, uh, the, the invocation, I was, I was doing with her. Yeah. So, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. And I mean... It, I'm sure you on you understand if you've done it. Um, I would do well. I chose the the person, you know, the one parent who I needed to do it with. And instead of me having to go after a wee rest, who will I choose next? I don't know if you've found this, but the universe showed me who I needed to do next. You know what I mean? It was you, like you're talking about on the inv. You were using the invocation. Uh, yeah. The, okay. And so you in the how did the universe show you that? It was like I would take a rest after doing you know, a person, and then a person in my family or my life would come to me like, this is me with all my drama in my life. I need you to rescue me, me, you know, and I was going, oh my God, you know, so yeah, it's been, and then I dealt with that, and then the next layer of person came along, you know, so yeah, it's been fun. I mean, 20, since you did a New Year's Eve show, and it was fantastic, especially for like agoraphobic people like me, these shows that are on at certain times. New Year's Eve day, I had the worst ascension symptoms, pain in my body. Like, it was unreal. It was like, um, but it was the last day. I haven't had it this year at all. It was like removing. And ever since you did the show that night, and then the next day, my guidance and everything has just been so clear, so strong. It's It's been unreal, you know, and I'm doing the invocation as well. So that's, that's another thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, I've got, uh, I just want to let people know in the Zoom room, I'll get to you. I see you and uh, I'm going to get to you. Uh, we're going to keep going though, and at least make another circle around this, this group that's here right now. Um, I just want to say something real quick because I don't want people to be out in, you know, uh, unclear. The invocation uh, and what goes with it is something Morgan Lee, my wife, downloaded over a number of years, quite a number of years uh, and uh, it, it's a it's a pretty simple process. It's not an easy process <laughs> because it brings up a lot of stuff. It's very confronting. But the interesting thing about it, and it helped me a lot uh, when I first uh, came together with her in the physical in 2017, it helped me a lot. Um, it, because it, it, you know, what I see happening is, is, is as I was, for instance, in 2015, 
when Morgan came the first time, I was very connected. I had a lot of stuff going on uh, and was contributing that to the community, but I was also very shadowed and very unaware. And, and what, I, what I find is that a lot of people, a lot of us are connecting and we've gone through this period of, you know, assimilating that uh, most of us have over identified with it at times. It's been a real challenge to the ego. This process is a very basic process. And I think it's kind of a microcosm of where we're all coming to, which is all that stuff is great, but it's the human is the hero frequency that makes this all happen. And like uh, Melissa said, it's a little brutal. Sometimes I call it the brutal honesty of the soul, but it's a method that you can actually uh, very simply go through uh, things in a very uh, sequential way and present things from your subconscious, deal with them, integrate them. And, uh, and of course, what that does is create space and allows more of your multidimensionality, higher self and so on come in. So um, I appreciate you mentioning that. And I'm glad that you're uh, recovered from uh, New Year's. I'm not sure what show that was. Let's move over to uh, Jeanette. It's a long time since we've seen you. I'm going to unmute you. Um, let's see. Is it working? Yep. Can you hear me? Or did you just mute it again? No, no, we're good. It's good I'm to good. see you again. It's very good Hello. to see you again. How are you doing? Nice to be on. Um, I'm doing well, yeah. thank you. A lot, a lot better today. The last week was brutal. <laughs> the last week was brutal. Uh, <laughs> was. I, you know, I, uh, of course, uh, Melissa mentioned uh, October, November, December. That was that was like you know that was just like right. that was to me was brutal. And Morgan and I were talking last night, and she was saying, you know, I feel like uh, we're we're uh, clearing, purging a lot of stuff since the first of the year. And I'm thinking, well, I thought we did that last year, but. She was talking yeah. about the finer things. Yes. The things that were really deep. And as you expand to a higher awareness, then you have a different vantage point and you see things that you didn't see before, you know, yeah. so can you relate to that? And, and are you uh, resonating uh, with what the ladies are talking about in terms of what served us is uh, no matter how magnificent it was and how multidimensional it was, seems to be falling away and that's part of the letting go does that any of that uh ring true with you oh it definitely definitely rings true um the fact of um i feel like fine-tuning like we're we're really fine-tuning here and i you know i i never really resonated with anything multi-dimensionally for myself um more energies um, like Mother Mary, definitely, I felt very connected to Mother Mary, but I didn't have a visual of that. Um, what's starting to come in for me now? Well, I'll tell you, the, the last week, a lot, a lot of anxiety the last week. I, I've been putting myself out there more. I did a live um, meditation on the Enlightened World Network, and there was just a lot of, ener um, lot of energy going on with that. And on Thursday, Wednesday night, this was after I had already done the meditation. I thought I was going to feel better while well, the energy was like even stronger. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I, the anxiety was just like through the roof. So I just said, I'm going to feel into it. I'm going to go into it and I'm just going to feel this, be with the anxiety and just, you know, see what happens. And um, I was telling Shanine about this too, that I saw two timelines. One timeline was, um, and I'm like I said, I'm not a visual person, but this was very clear. One timeline was I'm in service. And at the end, I'm very, very, very happy, very happy. And the other one was I'm not in service. And in the end, I was very, very, very happy. So to me, what I was being shown is whatever I choose, it's going to be okay. Just uh, one one path you, you're letting go and the other one you're getting dragged. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, but I can, exactly. but I can, I can relate to what you're saying that, that regardless, you're gonna end up in the same place. Right. Uh, and this is part of the conundrum, you know, that we're faced with, like this whole thing about like, I have a real problem now with people say you have to do this and you need to do that. And I'm like, bullshit. Yeah. Uh, don't exactly. tell me what I need to do because I'm trying to figure out. And I think everybody's, you know, uh, rowing their own boat, you know, and it's a very interesting. It doesn't make any sense, uh, you know, cognitively, you know, in the old way, you know, it's not the right. brain anymore. It's just. It's not the mind it's, anymore. It's, it's the not, heart. Yeah, it's the heart. Yeah, it's it's everything. I think I it's know, everything. It's, yeah, the whole the yeah. whole body. I yeah, agree. It's, yeah. It's, so that's a good that's a good subject. We're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna go back to that because we have a question that aligns with it. 
I like what you said. If you want to add a, a kind of a concluding comment, and then we're going to go on to our new friend, Wesley Switzer here in a second. In conclusion, I, there was so much relief in that because of course I'm going to go on with being of service, but there was so much relief in knowing no matter what I do, I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a, there's a, there's one uh, kind of an absolute and, you know, the universe doesn't, doesn't have the, the universe has a few absolutes to me. Uh, the problem we have is when we run, when we throw down our own absolutes, you know, and then we start to, to, to get reeducated. But, uh, and that is like, uh, one of the things that seems to be very, uh, gets louder and louder every day is, uh, you know, what would the word be integrity? Uh, mm -hmm. what we're doing, yeah. uh, what we're saying, and now it's getting into what we're thinking. Yes. And I agree with what you're saying. Um, which, which is, which is beyond our old human comprehension. But the, the fact remains that, that uh, the universe is holding us accountable. We're yes. holding ourselves accountable, however you want to put it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's uh, whatever road you take. That's, you know, that's that instant karma that, that people, I think uh, Melissa was talking about a minute ago. So, okay. So let's go to a, a new friend here, Wesley. Yeah, you want to unmute? No, you want me to unmute? Let's see here. Here, I'll do it. Oh, How's yeah. that? Good. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's good to meet you, brother. Uh, yeah. I, I think Shanine, uh, you're a friend of Shanine's. Yeah. I, she sent us a two or three names and we haven't gotten to them yet. We got like 60 shows scheduled over the next uh, five weeks. And uh, we don't know if we're going to, what we're going to be broadcasting in April. So we're a little bit hesitant to schedule anything yet. But, uh, but yeah, I look forward to sitting down with you at some point. So uh, how's it going for you? Uh, what's been happening and on the subject matter at hand? I'm not sure if you're a practitioner, uh, you know, or anything. Uh, if you've noticed any change in uh, what got you to this point that's starting to fall away or anything you'd like to talk about. Yeah, I'm actually going through quite a radical shift. Um, so for the past like four years, most of it I've like wandered. I've been had a backpack and like, just been letting go of it seems like ancestral trauma all along the way and over the past week I've started to work full-time for the first time in like forever mm. and so I've been very much kind of floaty like in kind of like an airy state um, and getting back to work has been um, getting back to like getting back to reality getting back to groundedness getting back to like something that i thought was not anything to do with spirituality i'd like thrown the idea of work out the window almost and mm -hmm. um and it's funny now that i'm back to work it's like i'm back to work in an industry that i was so averse to because of trauma so essentially i mean i'm moving i've moved backwards through all my previous traumas and like getting this job is like it's supportive in my of my life in a, in a very like grounded and, and sort of like 3d way um but it's also uh like the manifestation of a healing within of, of mm. like fear of construction work and the toxic masculine um and and so to like go back to work and, and be tired of shit but still um you know recognize that it's actually me moving forward seemingly paradoxically into like a 3d world but i'm moving it, it's a forward movement for me that I've been, yeah. I've been averse to, and it's been years since I've done it. Yeah, I can relate to that. And this is also aligning with the question in the Zoom room and a comment from Facebook. I'm going to bring these up after we uh, conclude with you and we start the second circuit. Um, but I can relate to that. Uh, I There was a period of time, I think it would have been, uh, mine started summer 2011. And so this would have been around uh, 2015. So it would have been like four or five years. And I'd been in construction my whole life. I'd, I'd done everything in construction, including like a, up to a national level, you know, small business and, and work with my hands and all that stuff. And I ended up going, I got an offer uh, to go in and take a, you know, a pretty good job, you know, about an $80,000 a year job. But it was as a construction manager in apartment complexes. And I liked it because I was working with my hands, but I was also doing some management. I didn't have to deal with the corporate stuff too much. But anyway, my point is, is that I can, I can feel what you're saying. It was, it was, it was only about a four month run because the, the matrix kicked me out or I kicked myself out. 
but it the while I was there, it was a very healthy experience for me. So I just say that because, you know, and going back to what uh, Jeanette was saying, either way, it's going to get you to the same place. It's just a matter of how you get there, you know. And I love what she said, because there is there is no right, right and wrong, you know, and it's a it's a I don't even I don't want to say it's a forgiving universe because I don't think forgiveness even exists anymore. I think we're in a different place. Uh, but you have any concluding statements? We're going to go in after after you make your statement. We're going to go back into the circuit one more time and we're going to talk about this duality uh foot in both worlds kind of thing go ahead hmm. yeah i found like in this transition what's shifted is i was really focused on being a practitioner being like a, a, a healer and i was super uh caught up in the identity of it and what i thought it meant and it actually was getting in the way of me facilitating that transformation for people mm -hmm. and now that i've moved into this kind of just like regular run of the mill environment. Um, it's actually opened things up for me to step into something more than the idea that I've had about what a practitioner is. So, yeah, yeah, it's been beautiful. that's it. Yeah. And you know what? And I'm, I'm just telling you this because it resonates from my own experience. When I took that job, it, it, what ended, and I was in the same boat, I really wasn't a protect practitioner. I would do some healing sometimes when spirit moved me or things aligned. But I was more, you know, doing, uh, I, I don't think I was even doing videos at the time. But by virtue of that job, you know, as I threw myself into the job and did the job with integrity, uh, they gave me a bunch of equipment. And then Spirit told me, uh, you know, create a studio and you're downstairs yeah. and start broadcasting. So I used their equipment to do it. <laughs> so <laughs> you never know how it's going <laughs> to flow. Uh, I'm going to go back around the circuit, but I want to tell and uh, I think it was Carrie. Uh, as soon as I get through this this circuit, uh, Carrie, Katie, I'm sorry, Katie, Katie Briscoe, uh, as soon as I get through this circuit, then um, I'm going to bring you two on and we'll we'll displace a couple of people or whatever we have to do. Okay, but I want to I want to preface it this way. Uh, there was a question in the Zoom room. So what I'd like everybody to do is take into account the question. And then there's a statement from the Facebook crowd uh, from uh, Rachel Mellon. Uh, so just kind of like, you know, there's no right or wrong answer. We're here to share our experiences and expressions and, uh, and, and just, you know, whatever we can offer. And, and sometimes maybe we can't offer anything. Uh, but let's see here. The question was uh, from Doris Williams. Okay. And she says, I am stuck in two worlds now duality question mark how do i reconcile to be in both now let me further uh back that up rachel uh mellon says i'm trying to get a balance between both worlds being of service and then being of service for myself so the healer and the woman uh so i think we can kind of all get the gist of that we'll start with you Anne. um you know are you faced with this how do you function in two worlds uh you know how do you how you how do you deal with that how do you reconcile that um can you add anything to that i don't know if i function <laughs> <laughs> i i teach english and german actually uh face to face with people and for me it's very difficult and then I have tried to identify with the practitioner role too. And I feel good with that, but it feels like I missed the grounding. So what had happened lately in my language listen is that I don't get into a role anymore. I'm just me. Yeah. And I feel when I'm just me, there is no two worlds. There is no duality. There's, the whole world is open to play in. I, I, yeah. Yeah, That's you know, what I have got since two months. Like, there is no identity. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Franco Di Nicola, who comes on about once a month, um, you know, he, he, he has that incredible intel that's been incredibly accurate for the last year that we've been doing shows with him and before, because I've gone back and watched some of his old YouTube stuff. And he talks about how the inverted matrix uh, ceased. Uh on I think the 16th of December and how we've moved, maybe this is describing the new, the quantum or this new thing that we're all kind of trying to like explain. 
But one of the things he says is, you know, he has planetary recall of several incarnations uh, of other planets. And he says that, you know, these planets are universities and playgrounds. And I think we've, uh, to me, I feel like we've get pretty much got past the university part. And now it's time slowly as we get acclimated to start playing to, to your point. So I can, I can relate to that. How about you, Zahara? What can you offer to us? Let me unmute you. Can you relate to the, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Can you relate to the, uh, a foot in both worlds scenario and anything you could offer to Doris and, uh, and Rachel? Um, it sort of goes back to, for me to the microcosm and macrocosm. So um, it's a state of mind and um, rather than um, that's how we create everything. And so it's shifting from feeling we have to be in one place to another place to being in, um, like Anne, Anne said, including everything. Um, and then just how Melissa said it, it's just going into the heart mm. because it's our minds that want to box and move from one thing to another. Whereas when we go into our hearts, as Melissa said, then we expand and include everything. So for me, it's about being aware of where my awareness is, um, whether I'm functioning more from a head place, but include that. So it's the head resonance isn't negative even. It's just, okay, that's where my resonance is at the moment, um, being in touch with my body, um, being in touch with my feelings, and, and, and just it keeps expanding and expanding. Yeah. And the more we expand, the more we see we are reflected everywhere. So there is no duality. But, the, but what I've been um, very much tuning into is acknowledging all the shadow work that's being brought up, that's coming to the core now where, which is not feeling at home in myself or, or from childhood with a family that, with adults that weren't at home with themselves. Yeah. And so um, I chose that obviously, and that's that deep wounding of the human species of not feeling at home within Mother Earth Gaia, which is really bizarre. Yeah. And then and I Go ahead. as we're wakening up, we cannot, we, we start, um, because alongside that, the trauma of, of being feeling displaced and the human species forgetting we're connected, we're, we're awakening and then we're detaching from being in um, the human ego playground. So it's, I think for me, that's a kind of, a, a sort of has felt like I'm separating from the, the big, the, the human game mm -hmm. to then going, okay, I need to be aware that my my mind wants to attach to that, yeah. but then if I let go, um, my my mind goes ah, which is all the fear stuff coming up, and then yeah. I can open up into being part of the bigger resonance, which is disappearing in a way into everything, which yeah. my mind can fight against so that's yeah. the, the duality i see in myself i see it um macrocosm and, and sort of um metacosm and, and it's all being played out all the all on many many layers <clears throat> yeah yeah and i think you bring up you bring up a couple of good points one of them you know you know uh, and this has just come up uh it came up for me over the, over the previous say 72 hours and then Morgan, she does uh, mandalas as she's anchoring stuff, you know, she does these incredible mandalas. And um, so she started to do one and it had, uh, and I'm looking at the two, it had uh, some pastels in it. Uh, it had a, like a, a, a unconditional love pink and, and shades of it. And then, and also blue. So it was the higher heart and the, um, and the throat chakra right and i'm missing another color but she put them on and she's like something's wrong with this she went she ended up going back and putting black you know uh, accentuating with black contrasting with black and she said it's a shadow and and i said that's what i've been getting the last two three days i just couldn't put it into words which was you know we have 
spent all this time talking about and searching this multidimensionality and then bringing in our multidimensional uh, aspects, you know, the shadow work is, is about releasing. There's no doubt, but it, but, but it's still part of us. The shadow is part of us and, mm. and we got to love that shadow. So I think that's, you know, I see everything really on this trip is about integrating, integrating uh, the human and the physical and the non-physical and everything. the human and the soul, you know? And so I think the shadow is is a big part of our this is why i say the human is the hero because nothing aligns unless the human and that's what i was saying earlier about uh when uh, melissa was talking about the invocation because it's such a uh basic um task it's almost menial compared to all the brilliance that we attach to in the dream in the lucid dreams and the channelings and yeah, the, like all that distraction yeah so it's like the it, it's <laughs> like oh so it's come back all the way around the circle to this to the one thing we're trying to like get away from, <laughs> get away we, from. Don't, we don't identify with and it's actually going to take these basic uh things uh mm. let's see Let, uh okay uh i'm gonna pop in katie briscoe if she's still here because she said she's got to go and i don't want to be rude hang on one second let me see if she has left yet okay katie i'm gonna bring you up right now and we're just gonna throw you into the fire okay <laughs> so let's go ahead and let her let's go ahead and let her because i haven't where is she at here she is okay let's see and okay start video katie can you hear me are you there there you are yes hang on okay katie how's it going it's going good um i just wanted to share real quick um i i see the struggle that so many people are going through um and my insight really has been if you're if you're staying in your mind and you're telling yourself your same stories you're repeating your history. Well, when I was a little girl, this happened. Well, when I was a teenager, this happened. Those stories are actually keeping you guys, every all of us, because we all do it, locked mm -hmm. into the denser dimensions. And really the only way to get freedom from those dimensions is to, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a little sick, shift your consciousness outside into your field because your field is your intelligence. It is your multidimensional intelligence. It is where all your truths and all your mysteries, all the answers are gonna lie there. So you really need to get out of your mind, your human mind perspective and into that field in order to shift into what we're all searching for, the freedom from the matrix and the denser energies and the old dogmas and all that stuff, but it, it really is as simple as moving your consciousness out of your mind and into your field because your, your body exists in your field. Your field doesn't exist because of your body. So mm -hmm. it's really tapping into the intelligent field that you are, that is your true reality, um, is really the, the key to the freedom in all this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can relate to that. And I also would add this is my opinion. I would also add that uh, we can, you know, the those past traumas, which were a big gift to all of us, which, you know, are part of our awakening and certainly part of our uh, when we release them, bringing in uh, other parts of ourselves. But th they're they're no more and no less uh, an, uh, an encumbrance uh, on our field uh, and on our awareness as are the channels and the connections uh, that also woke us up or were part of our wake up. Mm -hmm. I channel so-and-so or I connect yeah. to this star family and over identifying yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a really uh, a, a weird spirit science. Uh, because it really it is. is. And, it, and it all right. serves a purpose. Everything serves a purpose and got you to this point. But what I, what I see is if you want to move beyond this point, you really need to let go identifying with, um, you know, I was the single mother raising the children. Mm. I was the father with this burden. I, you know, you just, yeah. I mean, if we really want to expand our awareness and tap into those other timelines and travel into those other dimensions, that is the way to do it. Right on, right on. That, right on. And I appreciate that. And I'm sorry I kept you waiting so long. We're moving as fast as we can. Uh, we got 18 people in the Zoom house now and 88 <laughs> online, but uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Katie. Uh, let's try Deborah. Uh, back to the question on how do you deal with having 
a foot in both worlds. Uh, how do you how do you do that? Uh, can you offer Doris uh, a little bit of advice in any of this? Well, for me, it's surrounding myself with positivity. You know, for 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 yet I can't split myself in two. I have to live in the world, but I enjoy it. I I myself am is more comfortable and happier when I'm in the spirit world. Right on. Talking with them and but I know that in reality I'm here in life. And so I just try to keep that positivity and, and sorry about the train. It's okay. I came outside to get <laughs> there, are, there, there are no coinc there's no coincidences. No coincidences. Four, four grandkids in the house and the train outside. I, I don't know. I'm stuck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I dig what you say because, and that's what I'm getting at too, is the, the connections we've had with our, let's call them our other aspects, our multidimensional aspects, because everything outside of us is us. We know that we just, we're just learning it. You know, we're, we're embodying it and it, and that's going to take many, many levels it would seem. Um, but the, yeah, it, it's, uh, we want to play there. That's our safety zone, <laughs> but this trip's not about safety. In fact, when you're comfortable, it's just a matter of time before you you're put into uh, you pull, pulled out of your or pushed out of your comfort zone. And that for many of us is, 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 you know, um, moving away from all the activity and engagement we have, let's just say in the higher realms, uh, which the point is to, you know, bring that stuff into the human experience, or let's say the divine human experience. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a great point. Uh, and, and many of us can relate to that because we, you know, we all found it and we're like, oh, look what I can do. <laughs> you know, I, I like it up here. You people are all crazy and you're not awake. Well, you know, the fact is we're all, we, none of us can miss a step on the soul highway. Each one of us is, is given that opportunity so that we can bring it down here and, and uh, anchor it into the earth as Ann was talking about. And at that point, you know, yeah. everybody, everybody will be doing what Ann did, which is to, uh, <laughs> you know, get out in the garden naked with <laughs> music. Uh, Deborah, do you have any concluding comment? No, but you're right, because we're all one. Right you know, on. And it, this is the part that I've been working with the hardest to change my way of thinking in, in my heart space. Even even the, well, the quote, evil people, they're a part of us. That's right. So, you know. So, somebody, somebody mentioned about, was it you that mentioned about the religion uh, thing? And I think that's one of the things that... Uh, you know, in anything to me, everything is a potential program. I don't care if it's an ascension could be a program. Uh, Twin flames could be a program. Anything uh, could be a program. And the way I look at it is if it creates any separation whatsoever, it's a program, you know, and the, and the only reason I say that is for myself. I don't mean to, to throw that on anybody else, but yeah, oneness is oneness. There is no in between. So I appreciate that. Melissa, uh, how do you uh, navigate and maneuver with a foot in both worlds? I think, I think we as humans complicate shit all the time. And for me, the sat nav of your soul is your heart. And what we need to do is learn to, to really function as humans by making um, our mind work for us our heart work for us, our thoughts, our beliefs, everything work for us as opposed to against us. For me, what pulls me out of one world and into the other without exception at a rapid pace, it taps on what Katie said is, is um, feeding into the stories of our past. But here's the thing, feelings buried alive never die. So something feels like it's always trying to reach back up and out to us. But when we have gone through the healing that we have, when we've done the inner work, when it resurfaces, I think for me, because we're here having this human experience, is to compassionately tap into what it is that's trying to present itself to you, taking um, 
taken the wisdom from what you've learned and compassionately applying it. So if you do mess up, if you do find yourself being pulled from, from peace and bliss, ease and grace into chaos and carnage, that you don't be an asshole to yourself, that you, that you yeah. see it for what it is. And in the present moment, in that now moment, that you just pull yourself closer, you know, and not, not beat up on yourself. And, and the quicker that you do that, the quicker that you allow yourself to feel what's trying to be felt, the quicker you can restore this balance into your heart and then literally recalibrate yourself and re be the source of rest the restoration of the um, heart mind synergy. That's mm. pretty much it. Just stop complicating the shit. Be here in your heart as much as possible. That was a that was a mic drop. That was mic drop for you. <laughs> uh, we've dropped a couple of people. We're fixing to get to another new friend here in a second. We've got Rhea and uh, Jeanette and Wesley before we get to our new friend. Uh, but I want to tell everybody in the, this is uh, going very well. And you know, here at Sology, we do everything spontaneously, intuitively, creatively, and imaginatively. And depending on what we're talking about, or doing courageously. So I am soul. We're going to keep this thing going. Uh, and maybe do another hour. Now, I want to tell everybody in Facebook, if you want to come on, um, hit the Zoom link and come into the Zoom room and let me know on the Zoom chat that you want to come on. And I also want to tell those that are in the Zoom room, uh, uh, if you would like to come on, uh, just let me know in the chat. We're going to make uh, another round here and I can pull some more people on. And I do want to say, uh, I don't know everybody here, but I, but I do want to say hello to Jenny K. Uh, because she puts out some good stuff and I steal it sometimes. So I just want to say that and you're more than welcome to come on. So let's go to uh, Rhea. Rhea, how do you, um, how do you uh, navigate uh, being, you know, with a foot in both worlds? Man, try, try raising kids in this. Oh, try raising kids in these quantum times and you'll see how duality works. <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's, I'm a very unconventional parent and sometimes, you know, it's crazy. It's like, you know, your kids are star seeds or indigos or, or whatever they are, you know, and, um, uh, it's, it's, it's just difficult. I have just, I have issues at the moment where I'm sort of being told more children need, you know, they need structure and, all these things that I have kind of tried to fight against, you know, and um, so yeah, if, if things can be very contradictory, you know, I mean, I, I have a child at the moment that I don't, I don't want to, I can't say too much here, but that they're thinking about, they're about placing on the spectrum. Yeah. And, you know, the woman even said to me this week, I know labels are labels, but I have to use labels because words escape me. So if I can remember a label that does, you know, but um, she said, you know, how, for me as her parent to be a homeless agoraphobic with ADHD raising a child who's possibly on the spectrum must be incredibly difficult and I'm like Jesus you know it's just like that's not the way I explain things in my mind uh, we're all just like and I have two very sensitive children and I'm very sensitive myself and you know it's just uh, the the you know what we don't fit into the world and you know schools and doctors and people think you know the the 3d sort of the 3d yeah. that's what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah i get you yeah and i asked somebody that today on the previous show valentine that 22 year old from macedonia uh and you know are we i just asked you ria are we is it going to get to the point i mean no protesting no boycott no marching you know, and all that stuff. We, that's a fight and we can't fight. If we fight, we're just feeding the monster. But is it going to take us just simply saying, I'm not going to participate. You know, I'm not going to pay taxes. I'm not going to go get a driver's license. I'm not going to uh, vaccinate my kids. I'm just not going to do it. You know, I mean, I, I, I wonder, especially with these young people uh, who just seem to be like, you know what, I ain't doing this. Uh, I wonder if it's going to get to that point. What do you think? <laughs> I was born, I think, to be one of those type of people. And I, I have been like that a lot. I mean, with with um, certain, um, what do you call them, injections? The, you know, I was like, no for that. And then I went into the school, you know, and said, my daughter's not doing religious education. And they said, oh, but she must. It's on the curriculum. 
And I said to her there, well, it's not because there are certain religions who don't have to participate. You know, they don't have to by law, you know. And she said, are you one of those religions? And I said, no, I am of no religion. This is why I don't want my child in here. And in Ireland, history, subject and religious education, all it is is teaching. Your kids don't know anything about the different religions until they go to school and are taught, you know, there's this religion on the side and this religion on the side. And they went to war. And then your kids is coming home going, Mommy, what religion am I? Or and what religion is that person? And you know, so I did kind of stand up against the school and said, you know, my my daughter, and I did get her, I did get her not to do religious education, you know. Um because no, I don't. I don't think we must. You know, are you yeah. going to throw us in jail? I don't think so. Well, I think. I think. Yeah, I agree with you. We'll move on to Jeanette, but I agree with you. I just want to say too that look, the bottom line is this: we either believe in death or we don't. You know, so you know when you get right down to it, uh, we are we are claiming our sovereignty, and and many of us have had experiences in other dimensions uh, with uh, let's just say non-human energy or non-physical energy and at any point in any time we can claim our sovereignty and stand and stand on that uh in other words they can't hurt us so i, I just see that to me that seems to be the direction that we're going to go is it easy is it going to be uh, like a flip of a switch and it all just happens uh, i don't think so but i think the young people hold a big key to this because that's where the the most prolific revolutions frequencies have been throughout human history and uh yeah i think yeah and and i've got yeah you know, i help raise six kids uh, and and i can imagine uh what that would be like to still be doing that uh but i i also see the incredible frequency these kids are carrying so it's blessings or burdens or burdens or blessings <laughs> and all blessings to you and your children so uh jeanette how do you navigate uh how do you navigate both worlds? I know you pull in light language, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're connected. Uh, how do you function um, in, let's just say the 3d at the same time? You know, it's, it's really funny because um, the universe has really set me up well because I am um, a physical therapist assistant. I do home health. So um, in service, when I'm working with my patients, all of my coworkers know that know that I ha have the spiritual side that I speak light language. Um, all my closest family and friends, um, my husband, they all know that I'm doing this. So I'm I, I'm I'm set up so well. There's no stress with what I'm doing. All the duality is within myself. It's all about feeling comfortable with who I am and what I'm putting out there. And um, yeah, just um, feeling like I'm not letting anybody down, feeling like everything that I'm doing is is the correct way that this is where I struggle with mm -hmm. being in the 3D and, and you know, in, in the multi-dimensional universe. So it's, um, and I, I just love this question and I love listening to everybody because everybody seems to have a little bit of a different take. Although yeah. I'm a lot like Melissa, where I come back into the heart, as long as I come back into the heart and to the breath and into the present moment, it all comes together for me. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, uh, having a conversation with the, the consciousness of, of mother Mary, um, yes. back in 2016, when I was in the original studio and uh, <clears throat> she put me through <clears throat> a, a boot camp, kind of like Morgan did when I met her. It must be related. Uh, but uh, <laughs> so it was about a five day period. And I remember at the end of it, in, in somebody mentioned the paradox. Uh, the whole thing is paradoxical. You know, uh, it was Rhea. She mentioned it. But so it was in that uh, paradoxical wisdom of the universe. She said to me, who do you trust on that side of the veil? And I said, me. And she said, who do you trust on this side of the veil? I said, me. She said, right answer. And that was the end of the lesson. <laughs> and <I've> been, <laughs> keep in mind, Mother Mary consciousness has been with me since I was a little kid, like probably the strongest. It has been the strongest one, uh, that Mother Goddess, Mother Mary uh, frequency. So, yeah, I totally get that. How about you, Wesley? How do you how do you uh, you're kind of the one that started this, you and the, and the two ladies in the audience. But how do you. Um, how do you navigate uh, having a foot in both worlds? 
funny. So as everyone's talked, it's like there's been, I've had these thoughts and then there's this expression from each individual that's like an expansion of the individual thought that I've had right before they expressed it. And so everyone's pretty much said the things that I was thinking about, but what, what I get brought back to are some very simple, practical things like engaging with um, aspects of myself in, the, in another human and, and moving with them in integration. Um, and, and finding that that really brings me back into my body, into my, into my heart, where I'm able to work as like a practitioner or be on the receiving end of, of that. Um, and I find that that just brings me back into, yeah, into my heart, into the word I was coming up with was meaning. It's meaningful. So I'm finding, I, I find meaning in things. And when there's something that's meaningful, it brings me back into the here now instead of mm. getting lost in the amorphous um, emptiness or whatever like <clears throat> rabbit hole I can go down. And mm. so right now, like getting a job is also like, you know, if you would have asked me this two weeks ago, I wouldn't have said getting a job. But now it's like, oh, getting a job. That's just the point that I'm at. That's the integration that I'm, yeah. that I'm kind of, uh, that, that I'm working with. And, um, you had mentioned something about integration, which was also an important piece. So it's like um, when I'm in a kind of confused state or whatever, it's because generally there isn't, I'm not aware of a shadow aspect that's split off. And so to, to bring that into presence or, or whatever, use some modality or that just allows me to go from like this into this. And then, and then there's no idea of duality. There's just me being in life right now, doing what I'm doing. And, and there's no, there's no yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that kind of goes with uh, what uh, Katie, I think her name was Katie uh, that was here a minute ago. Uh, was saying that, that it's really that simple doesn't that doesn't mean it's easy but yes. but like what you guys were saying is okay if if your go-to is to always go back into the heart then if you flip that around say okay what's what pulls me away from that space yeah. so you kind of know you know it's kind of like the the uh the red flag uh device has kind of uh, been accentuated uh, and taking on a bigger presence for us. So I think that's a that's a good point you bring up. Let's hear from our new friend, uh, Igidujus uh, Sidlaukas. Sidlak I'm sorry if I uh, damaged your name there. But uh, it's a pleasure to, let me see, make sure you're, yeah, you unmuted? No, yeah. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir, uh, beloved brother. Uh, you, we've gone around and uh, with the second uh, question uh, let's develop a new one why don't you just tell us a little bit about who you are uh, and let me just say real quick anyone left in the Facebook audience that wants to come in uh, hit the zoom link come in we're going to make another round uh, and anyone in the zoom room uh, just let me know in the chat that you want to come in but it's a zoom chat I have to bring you up from zoom so my brother uh, tell us a little bit about who you are where you're from and uh, yeah just open up the discussion and we'll see if we can spontaneously come up with something to, to run around the circuit with. I'm from Lithuania in, uh, uh, in East Europe, Eastern Europe. Um, yeah, been uh, on some spiritual uh, road for two years. Uh, <laughs> straightforward don't uh, not not remembering so much of a downs just ups so and what's that like to be uh, in eastern europe i mean i know we've got a couple of ladies here from ireland uh and i think Anne's in france um but uh what's it like to be in, i'm a history buff so i know a little bit about the history of eastern europe uh, it, there's a lot of history, actually, a lot of old, old history, important history. What's it like to become awake in uh, Eastern Europe, given the last 50 years and all the evolution that it's had? Mm, yeah. Uh, I mean, are you, uh, are, you, are you typical over there? Are there a lot of people waking up? Do they talk about it? Well, uh, you can you, you as it goes 
uh, all over the world uh, the energies are coming in and everything is changing and people are getting more more happy and uh, doing 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 the people are returning to to the to the hearts to the self and yeah it's uh, i have been working uh, outside of country and then uh, i came back here two years ago and uh, well i don't know change changes changes happening yeah yeah um, and now now do you see people I do you see do you see people in the community that are that are um do you see that in because in, a lot of people that i've talked to around the world typically just see it on on social media they don't really experience it a lot locally do you experience it in the community that you're in or in your work when you travel uh what can i say the uh, the things the things um the things that uh, matters the most now that it's like uh what's uh that your heart is singing right and uh and the energies that was all over the place before they are not um they're not that um powerful or they they are uh, i mean yeah as you say 50 years it we have been gone for 50 years uh, uh much much things have happened and um um i mean we have learned what things do not serve uh, who does not have um, long long distance uh, does not um, does not serve for for humanity or does not have a yeah that's sh- as we have a saying here at Sology that shift won't fly you know in Texas they say that dog won't hunt in other words the universal energy is not supporting anything but these new energies that people are feeling that's coming in the things that you're talking about i want to ask you a question and then we'll move on to back around the circle again but let me uh tell my friend anna isabel uh, uh or anyone last call anyone in the facebook crowd that wants to come on screen and have a chat uh there's a zoom link that is in the text of this live just click it, come into the Zoom room, and then send me a message in the Zoom chat that you want to come on, okay? Uh, So let me ask you a question, uh, or ask you for a question, and and, and you can if you want, and you don't have to if you don't want to, but do you have a question or anything you would like to talk about that we can run around uh, the panel and discuss? Um, the question uh, for everybody (laughs) Uh, mm, 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 mm. yeah there is there is things that uh, people looking for the answers and uh, grabbing information there and there and uh, it seems like um, there is missing some directions for what's happening uh, in the world from from very beginning uh, i mean the mind wars and uh, um, evolutionary steps like Atlant- atlantis or lemuria before that or uh, gods in uh, egypt or i mean there is there is more information for like uh, more information in ancient times i mean where everything fall or like in the religion books like adam and eve you know what's happened there what's uh, so uh like everything is um the story re- story repeats cycles repeats and uh, mm-hmm. and things the people should know that uh, there is um there is like uh, this um I get you. The the choices that we make, you know, uh, collectively, and that is the things like it's important uh, um, at 
this uh, moment. I mean, this shift is happening like in 10 years, going to be in 10 years, we're going to make, I mean, people, humanity going to make a huge uh, shift. And, uh, but uh, in this, I guess, I mean, we have to be like uh, more, more uh, in the gatherings and more, more in, uh, in the unity and have the same information and, and know what's, uh, what um, what is waiting or what choices um, to make? Um, yeah, there is no, like a snake snake in the Bible. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so this is this is a good subject. I'm glad you brought it up. This will this will be most likely the last one we run around the circle with. We've got our friend uh, Ana Isabel Rintes here. Uh, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, work her in as well. So let me let me preface it and thank you because yeah. it's important. Uh, there's so much stuff out there. There's so many sacred texts, and and, and I've spent uh, particularly a few years ago many many probably about three years researching every night, like many of us have. And of course, we don't know that everything we see is the truth. But you can kind of piece everything together. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot to learn from the history that was hidden from us. Uh, even if we're just talking about going back a few thousand years to the Sumerians. Um, but to your question, I think that's the, you know, what, what I, what's important is the code, uh, the data, um, the information, the truth that's available through uh, what we might call our ancestors, our previous civilizations, our previous incarnations, however you want to put it. So and let me just say this, and then I'm going to open it up with Anne. Um, Lemuria uh, and Atlantis have been really coming up over the last two, three years. I know we've talked about it a lot at Sology. Morgan and I uh, were in Kauai, which was Lemuria. We spent 10 months there. We're now in Florida where Atlantis is. And there seems to be a lot of talk about Atlantis right now. So I guess what we can do is go around the horn. And well, we'll start Atlantis, with a, uh, can I have a word again? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Atlantis, Atlantis was, uh, uh, now it's like a choice, you know, to get back to your previous universes in Lemuria, you know, where it was uh, only, I mean, there is two laws, you know, you, you love the Lord, you know, and love the other. And then Atlantis, uh, how the big fall happened before Atlantis, it was that they start to worship uh, human, each other, you know, and uh, brought up the God, God thing. At, um, that's where the dark, dark energies began to, uh, we have, we began to explore the, the uh, dark energies. So where was the fall happened there, you know? Now it's like uh, it's like a choice to get it back to the previous universes of the original universe, the firstborn yeah. uh, creation. Yeah, uh, and and I mean the answers is there. Yeah, the uh, yes, and the uh, I'm glad you brought that up. We got another friend coming in, uh, Rachel Rich. Okay, we're gonna. Oh, I'm getting. Uh, I'm getting a good sign right now. I'm not sure what it means, but I think it has to do with the subject. So the, the Atlantis thing, the Lemuria thing, uh, as even the Egyptian, you know, uh, from what I've experienced on my own and what I've observed in the community, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of information there, good information. We're here to, this isn't just a, an alignment or a, a universal correction for the earth. This is across all timelines and dimensions. This is, you know, that information is useful to us. They obviously, the previous incarnations of previous civilizations didn't get it, didn't get it totally right. We're here to get it as, as right as we can, you know, is the way I see it. Uh, but I think it's important. Uh, so I'm going to open it up with Anne uh, and we'll go around the horn uh, and, and so I guess what I'm looking for is how can we get this information? Because there's a lot of different narratives out there. 
uh, I know ultimately we have to we have to discern for ourselves and and feel into things. But how do we get this information? What do you know about any of the previous civilizations that might help us? Or what do you have to offer on the subject of anything? We'll start with Anne. Oh, well, that's a big one. <laughs> I have been very much into that for years, but with all the rest, it's also as if, it's not that it goes out of the window, but I see with my shadow work that I come back, I have a lot of Atlantic sh Atlantis shadow but I feel at the moment we are like going backwards, 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 backwards. And it's all not important because we are going, I feel like I'm going through it as I'm going inside myself to work all the layers and the shadows and the belief systems and the traumas and the weird things in my psyche and the sci-fi and all that stuff that I was into for years. I feel like now it's as if I'm going inwards, 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 inwards. And I'm deleting, 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 deleting. And, and all that new earth, it's as if back to the paradise, back to the first creation of earth. I don't know how to explain this. That's, the original. That's, that's, what, back to uh, that's, what, that's what he just, yeah, that's what he was yeah, just saying. Yeah. That's my experience. Yeah, I like that, uh, back to the innocence. That, that takes care of the whole thing right there. How about but you, Jeanette? Oh, I'm sorry. That we're there no they're inside us so i feel yeah. like when we are deleting deleting the history is deleting somehow well yes I, I i agree with that i think uh it's what's the difference between our own personal traumas that we've had to go into and the inner work the shadow work to clear uh you know the distortion what's the difference between that and, and the stuff that we've experienced in the previous lives or that we have in our dna through our ancestral lineage um uh, you know i i uh yeah i think we're we're all three saying pretty much the same thing. What do you what do you think, Jeanette? Do you have anything to add to it? Wait, let me unmute you. You're good. No, you just muted. Hang on, let me do it. Okay, you're good. Oh, wait a minute. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. We okay. Can. <laughs> Um, okay. Um, I, I don't, honestly, I don't know a lot about the history of, um, Atlantis and Lemuria. And I've heard a lot of things over the last year. So that it's all kind of new to me, but I will tell you that the very first thing that I channeled and it was, um, an automatic writing channel, I kept getting woken up at 3 30, 3 33. 333 mm. for three days in a row. I finally got up. I went and I got a pen and paper and started writing. And it was from the Lemuria. <laughs> it was from the Lemurian collective. But um, I know for me, um, yes, it goes back to innocence. That the, the one thing that came up big for me uh, towards the end of the year was going back to the, uh, to the inner child, which I never really thought much about um, mm. throughout my, you know, going, going to the inner child. And I realized that it really was quite important important because there was a message there um from the inner child to be in joy to have fun to to go back to the innocence to mm. not take everything so freaking seriously you know it just yeah. that's yeah. that's <laughs> that's what it came back to for me so, sometimes the, the most profound things are the simplest things right exactly and there we go again there we go again with the uh uh the paradoxical teaching of the universe. I remember when I woke up uh, nine years ago, I kept hearing, I kept writing, you know, I was doing poetry and I was writing. Um, I would hear uh, that there is a, uh, that the finite mind is complicated and the infinite mind is beautifully simplistic. You know, I mean, it's just, it's simple, yeah. just a few words and, and, and yeah. So yeah, exactly. uh, there's, a, there's another uh, congruent statement. How about uh, how about you, Wesley? Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I'm also not uh, well versed in the uh, the literature around Lemuria or Atlantis. I've almost been kind of averse to it, actually. Mm. Like I had mm. some belief that oh, that's bullshit, and I never really went into <laughs> it that uh, deep. Um, I, I mean, I'm open to it. I can feel it in my in my body when people are talking about mm -hmm. it. There's there's something in that. Mm. Um, I tend to go back to my own experience um, and what I can validate. Um, 
So um, what was specifically the question? I don't use. Well, but... just, just, uh, well, you know, I mean, just if you had anything to add to the importance of uh, those memories, uh, the mm -hmm. code of, uh, that, that it offers, the information it offers and or, you know, such as Jeanette saying that she really didn't have a whole lot of uh, uh, interaction with it, but she just, you know, kind of went back to the, uh, the innocence thing as, as uh, our brother said at the beginning. Um, so what's what's coming up for me is almost like um, if it's arising and there's something inside of me that, that I feel um, there's something to integrate and I think that you know everybody's integrations are different um, yeah. and that different aspects of a, an individual soul are going to be unlocked by different frequencies different information um, and as we're talking about it I actually you know about five minutes ago maybe a little less I had to go through an integration where it was just like super intense for me. I had to close my eyes and I had to just feel into what was arising. So I could see that there's value in it, regardless of the what's going on in the, 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 the thought world or the, yeah. the things we're, we're expressing. The energy that I, I can't pronounce his name, um, where he was coming from was something that I had to integrate in the moment. And so where he was coming from sounds like was information about Atlantis and, and Lemuria. So um, in my own personal experience, without any of the, the knowledge about it, I could say, well, yeah, there's definitely something there. I don't know what it is, but there was something in that moment for me to, to embrace yeah. and, and integrate for sure. And that's why it's so important to have these, have these discussions, whether we do them on camera or not, because regardless of what we pull from all that stuff, I'm a big believer, a firm believer that our highest activations uh, co uh, opportunity to open up code within our DNA mm -hmm. uh, transmissions, downloads come from each other. Uh, but I want to say too, that, you know, the, um, well, I'm going to come back. I don't want to start something new. I want to go to Anna and Rachel, and then we're going to come back to our brother in Eastern Europe. And I'm going to put a little spin probably the last question, uh, a little spin on what he's talking about uh, with, uh, with Atlantis, Lemuria, Egypt, and all that. Uh, but let's uh, bring in Ana Isabel Rente. Uh, I've seen you for a long, long time uh, on uh, Facebook, and you've been a big supporter, and, and, I've, and I actually watched a video of yours the other day. So I just want to say welcome, and it's good to see you finally uh, and, and have you on. Uh, do you have any uh, do you have any comments on the Lemuria, Atlantis, uh, et cetera, or anything else you'd like to talk about since you just stepped in the room? Uh, hello, Todd. I'm very grateful to finally join you too. And um, um, I agree with what uh, Janet said and Anne and the other before I don't remember the name um, and what I'm getting is we honor I honor the Lemurian experience the Atlantis experience but uh, we are expanding and it's a breathe in and out universe the way we are working and we are growing and so it's a it, we are in a totally new world, new experience, and we are here to co-create <laughs> together. Mm. And uh, that's what we came here to <laughs> to to learn how to uh, a body with many infinite minds. Or uh, I'm not saying the right word it's because we are one with many expressions in bodies, and now we are starting to get how to expand this more and really create magic and miracles that we came here to, to do it. But of course, it's it's bit in and out and in and out expanding. I don't know how to put in words. And you that's just did. something that, that was, I'm feeling also. That was perfect. Yes, yeah. that words doesn't do it. Yes, words doesn't do it. It's more because I'm doing the same as Janet, I don't call, I don't even name like like language or but I'm hearing and I'm doing stuff and, and singing and, and because it that brings me joy and that it's a way to communicate that's different than words and it's um, 
and people get message with yeah. different. So I just I just have one I just have one quick question. <laughs> yeah, I, I have I have one quick question for you. So when you're singing, are you in the garden like Anne naked? <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm kidding. I think I just blew her mind. She, she <laughs> what? No, uh, I'm kidding. I was making a joke because no, Anne said no, okay. Anne, yeah. Anne said Anne said that she likes to sing and she wants to uh, be naked in the garden when she sings when she feels so good. I'm kidding. I was making a joke. If that's what you do too, I was kidding. <laughs> no, no. that was a bit i'm not like a good comic. Love singing. Yeah. so uh, you no, hang on to that hang, hang on to that we're going to make another round i want to uh bring rachel rich in but after rachel talks yes we're going to go back to our brother in eastern europe and i have a question that i want to end with but after that's done any one of you that wants to well i'll tell you what after that's done each one of us will have something to offer if you would like to and if you want to do light language or you want to just say something else or a prayer or whatever we can so let's bring on rachel rich i'm gonna unmute you okay uh hi rachel it's good to see you welcome to solar uh let's see now uh anything you want to to two part uh anything you want to offer on atlantis lemuria any past civilization that's important so whatever experiences anything you might feel that's uh, important or anything that you want to talk about um, I don't yeah sure um, I don't have a lot of experience with Atlantis or Lemuria though I do feel more connected to Lemuria um, but I can just add that just recently I was uh, doing a meditation and um, I had what I believe to be a download of or vision or whatever you want to call it um, as I was sort of going deeper and connecting in with the earth that I sort of reached a portal that I'd sort of started to free fall into and um, and I could see all the layers of the earth moving really, really quickly and, and I just sort of let myself free fall into that and where I got to the, what I believe to be where there was like the molten lava, the hot, sort of the hot heat area of the earth, I felt fear rising in me um, before I realised that I was actually... Um, not in this human form and that the elements didn't affect me so as I continue to sort of free fall deeper 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 um, I sort of popped out into what I believe to be the inner earth which um, was you know just this amazing beautiful earth um, and it was a lot of the new rainbow crystal sun children already there and the people that had done the work were sort of all sort of landing into this new earth and what it sort of showed me was that um, it, it's, and I've heard you speak to other um, people on the show, you know, about us being um, taken to the new earth. And what was shown to me was that as we go deeper within ourselves, the rest of everything breaks away. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so the crust kind of, yeah. Yeah, goes away. I like that. So that and, and, that's uh, all I've got. <laughs> and I'm glad we got someone from Australia. I can recognize the accent because my wife's Australian. Yeah. Uh, and I'm from Adelaide too. You're from Adelaide. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, I'll see you one day. Might yes, you a, will. <laughs> might be another year or so, but we, I, I, I've always felt like we were going to settle there at some point. Yeah. We got some yeah. work to do before then. Uh, uh, let me uh, skip a beat here. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got about another ten minutes or so. Just want to let everybody know, because uh, I've got some things I got to do. Two hours is 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 uh, plenty, but. I want to make sure we get to everybody. Valerie Adams is just joined us and she does videos and she's been doing them for a long time. And I have a lot of respect for anyone and everyone don't get me wrong, but, but it takes a lot to get out there and do these videos. Uh, you know, I've probably been involved in like 3,500 of them. And, uh, and even now, and sometimes it's still, you get conscious, self-conscious about it and, you know, and you doubt yourself and stuff. So I just want to say big props to Valerie and thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. And uh, I'm just going to open it up to you. You can just talk about whatever you want to talk about uh, and, uh, and, and uh, we can get acquainted with you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Awesome. Um, I've actually got some new toys. So the light and I have a microphone now. We're trying this out. So excellent. Um, yeah, I have been uh, doing on the live video journey since uh, about 2015. Yeah. 
I uh, started putting it out. I, I was, uh, <laughs> I was the drama queen on Facebook. I put my life out on Facebook when I first jumped right on Facebook, social media, mm. my life mm. was out there, good, mm. bad, and different. And so mm. really doing the lives really was no surprise that I went with that journey. But um, what changed was my attitude. And it wasn't all about what you did to me. It was about what I did to you and yeah. taking account for, for me, for yeah. my actions. And um, my journey really pretty much has come from the point of who you as third person I use here, um, who you guys all hate who you all judge, mm -hmm. who you all put down. That's where I come from. Yeah. And that's where <laughs> my bell. <laughs> um, that's what I've come from is the, like what Todd said, the forgiveness, it, it is no more. Um, we didn't, I didn't do anything wrong. Nobody did anything wrong. All this is a divine, perfect, glorious yeah. experience. And um, I've come from that. Wow. I, I try a... not to look at that. And I've heard you guys, someone said, um, definitely tell a different story. I recently have come to where my experience <clears throat> been traveling the country for the last five years. Um, I've told my story. I've told mm. who Valerie was. Mm. And I see definitely in 2020, Valerie is no more. Yeah, that's a, and it's profound to watch people transform. <clears throat> in fact, I did the same thing and I started the same time you did, uh, 2015. And, uh, but it's, it's powerful to watch people transform. It's, it's, it's full of code. It's, it's, it's just extraordinary. And it's not the words, it's not even what they're talking about. It's just the energy of the transformation. that's so, so powerful. Um, I don't, I, I don't want to, I'm going to keep moving because we, we're going to one more round <laughs> and you stay, you stay because we're going to, you're going to have the, the mic one more time. Uh, and I want to say this too, in regard to what we were talking about with the Atlantis, the Lemurian, uh, you know, as Valerie brought up other people focusing on other people, uh, or whatever the subject is, uh, Ray Miller's talking about thought and uh, talking about Atlantis. Uh, people talk about the Anunnaki. People talk about all kinds of stuff. You know, two things. I just want to make a comment. One, I'm a firm believer that anything that we pull down from our multidimensional aspects from the universe, no matter whether we share it or not, is first and foremost meant for ourselves. And then the same thing would hold for anything that makes us uncomfortable, anything that we feel like we've got to tell people. And that includes me, you know, that includes me. It, it's, you know, we got to remember if it's making me, if it's making an impression upon me, then there's, it's most first, most first and foremost meant for me. You know, it's meant for me. I'm not going to find my solution by convincing the rest of the world of something uh, because it's still going to be unsettled in myself, you know, because one, one, like what Valerie said a minute ago, once you get to a certain point, uh, and you and you've brought it into yourself, it goes away, <laughs> and so you don't even have, you don't even have to say anything at that point. Uh, and do you have anything? Uh, I'm not going to have the question because we'll run out of time. Uh, do you have anything that you want to uh, leave us with? Uh, the floor is yours. No, I just want to thank everybody. I would have loved to sing, but I don't want to take up. I don't know where that goes if I start. So. I would just use by saying that I would have liked to, but with 10 minutes, I feel that it's taking up too much space. But I have been thinking about Todd. Uh, you and Morgan told that you would like somebody to do interviews. Mm -hmm. I have been thinking about that, about that for a week now. Mm -hmm. So I'll just let you know. Well, you know what? Uh, Not do an interview with me, but me interviewing. I know. People. I know what okay. you're saying. And, uh, you know, I'm actually struggling with, uh, well, what we were talking about here. And uh, I just want to say again, everyone's going to have a chance to, say, to make an including, concluding statement or expression. But uh, there's no coincidences. 
you know, everyone knows that I've been, you know, talking about a, you know, an independent stream, an independent social media platform, you know, so kind of a Facebook, YouTube, Wikipedia, all in one. I don't know if that'll ever happen. I've had to let go of it. Uh, I definitely want to see, we had our first, uh, our very first uh, uh, host, hostess, uh, or moderator besides me, just a few days ago with Hung Nguyen, our friend from uh, Canada. Uh, and so, yes, I see that happening because there's a lot of things I'd like to do as far as video production and just different things, uh, putting together uh, different things uh, from the archives that we have. We've got over, you know, six or 7,000 hours of archives. So, yes, uh, yeah, thank you for saying that. Uh, I'm sure it will come in time and uh, don't be shy. Uh, and if anybody does want to come on, uh, please don't send me a message. Send it to Morgan because it'll never, I'll never get to it. And, 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 and we have a lot of people asking, so it could take a while. Um, we will be doing this again uh, to Mark's point uh, in the, in the Facebook room, but thank you, Ann. And it's a good seeing you again. Very much. So Jeanette, do you have anything? Um, well, I would first like to thank you and Morgan for all that you do. And I would like to thank everybody um, and honor everybody who spoke tonight and anybody who's been on the call with us. This has been a, this has just been wonderful. Thank you so much. And um, blessings to everybody. Thank you, Jeanette. Okay. Wesley. Okay. Yeah. Um, thank you for this. This is super cool. I love doing this stuff. Um, I've done it a bunch with Shanine. I did it uh, just recently with Bradley Westcott on the True Man Show. Um, so shout out to Shanine for always hooking me up. That lady is mm -hmm. amazing. I love her. Um, and thank you for, uh, for bringing me on, Todd. This has been super awesome. Um, I kind of have a, a dream of doing something similar. I've done a little bit here and there, some, some interviewing pieces, and I see there's integrations going on for me that look like potentially that's a timeline I'm traveling down. Um, so to be a part of this is, uh, it feels fulfilling and feels like, uh, purposeful and just, I just have a sense, it, it's exciting and, and, and like, I, I feel the aliveness in my body. So I really appreciate being able to be a part of this. Thank you. Right on, right on. And, and it's a pleasure, uh, and an honor having you here. Sure. I, I hope I got that right. <laughs> yes. Is, uh, any comments you want to make, uh, before we go? Um, we, uh, so there is um, actually like um, uh, I was looking for truth when I beginning of my awakening and then uh, yeah I spot spot one one um, lady on YouTube that was uh, actually uh, triggered me of course, I tested that information, you know, like uh, during the awakening, how you test it takes some time. Some, uh, and um, yeah, uh, and she actually speaks like uh, <clears throat> that there is only one uh, divine channel for ascension for whole humanity. Uh, and that's actually would uh, that makes the game <laughs> a bit easier i guess yeah that there is only one channel and uh, i have been with this channel for a few years now and it brought some truth that uh, was the keys for for um, standing in the front line for uh, yeah, for energy shifts and uh, uh, like it was, uh, some lady was speaking before here that it, it is um, things like bad weeks and a lot of stuff going on. Uh, yeah, for me, it's like uh, i'm not having the those bad moments unless it's like of course something you're doubting yourself and then you are in humble moments mm -hmm. but uh 
most uh, yeah most of the time there is there is a direction and there is a, uh, there is truth in it. Yeah, it's a very good articulation, uh, and I, I do believe that ultimately there's one channel. Uh, I just have to say because we all have to speak our truth. I don't think there's one channel. Uh, no, there is. Of, there is a lot. There was a lot, you know, because. No, no, I I, I know what you're saying. I just want to. Yeah, I just I want to. I'm saying what you're saying. Uh, and what I'm saying is, I'll say it in a funny way. <laughs> and that's that, you know, uh, yeah, ultimately there is one voice. Um, but we've all got to stay open. Uh, I don't see anybody walking on water at this point. You know, we, we all have to stay open. We all, we all uh, uh, have come a long way. And I personally believe that we are the darlings of the universes at this time at this space and time we've we're valiant valiant souls every single one of us and and i appreciate every single one of you and i want to tell you my brother from eastern europe uh i appreciate your comments and uh, i'm happy that you came on today i've noticed i don't get to make a lot of comments on facebook or anything but i've noticed your comments and i and i and i can feel your energy and uh you're a, you're a pure soul and uh Thank you for honoring us with your presence today when you came in. Uh, Anna, do you have uh, any comment you would like to leave us with? Um, I'm grateful for all being here. And we are the channel for me. We are the channel of our there's only one channel because we are one we are mm. the channel each and every one of us and we are the creator so whatever we decide we are creating <laughs> that's it mm. now yeah <laughs> rachel. Mm. rachel rich Um, yes, thank you. Thank you, Todd, and, and everyone here for your energy. It's just beautiful to be a part of that. And um, for me, my message would be to, as you progress forward and whatever comes up, the, the good, the bad, the indifferent, is just to continue to love yourself through it and just keep seeking deeper truth. Mm. Wow. I see you in Adelaide in probably 2021. I'll be here. Valerie Adams. Hello. Yes, I um, appreciate being here. Um, this one reason why I haven't been doing a whole lot of lives is I don't get much freedom from a four month old puppy. So this has been great. I appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you. I appreciate all of you for coming in. I'm happy that uh, that there has been a masculine presence here. I've noticed that mm -hmm. the uh, percentages, you know, when we started Sology nine years ago, it was 82% women and 18% men. Now it's 62% women and 38% men. YouTube, which we didn't really start doing until January of 2019, uh, was 95 women, 5% men. And, and wow. over the last three months, it's gotten to about 78% women, 22% uh, men. So, so it's happening. Uh, it's happening because of each and every one of us. I would encourage uh, Wesley and anyone else, pick up the camera anytime you feel like it. Don't worry about having it spit and polished. Just get out there and do it. Don't base it on how many views you get or likes. Uh, I can tell you from personal experience that the social media uh, metrics are not accurate. Uh, they're not shared. And um, you're hitting a lot more people than you think. So uh, I like this. I didn't know we were going to go two hours, but uh, that's okay. I think it was perfect. And uh, I look forward to expanding this, this type of program in the platform. And I just want to say to everybody on the live and replay, 
uh, we are trying to do something here. Uh, I downloaded uh, Sology Network 24-7, 365, uh, began in 2016. Um, and I've had many downloads since then. I don't really understand it. I'm not attached to it. I've pretty much given up on it. But we're going to report for work every day. Our main orders with Morgan and I orders, our main direction is uh, to be together, to love each other when we're together, and to broadcast. So we're going to do that at a minimum. But I would ask everyone to please uh, uh, offer some uh, strong energy, positive energy, alignment, uh, so that we may uh, together expand this uh, vortex uh, that we call Sology, which is just a mirror of the universe, adding frequencies to an ever-expanding vibration. We cannot divorce ourselves from any aspect of the universe, and we're just trying to do our best. And so we would not be here if it wasn't for you guys. And, uh, and we're going to report for work every day and, uh, and keep on going with it. And I look forward to... Uh, uh, touching base with each one of you again. If any of you want to be on the show, please contact Morgan. Um, and uh, I'll see you later. Peace out. Thank you. Bye.